Hello, and welcome to my session Implementing DevOps with Power Apps. I'm really excited to be here with you today. Uh, but first, let's give a big hand to our sponsors. Without these great organizations, we wouldn't be here today. So thank you, sponsors. Uh, my name is Terho Antila. I am a consultant working on Microsoft technologies in a company called Cloud Driven, based in Finland. Uh, Power, Power Apps, Power Platform, Azure, those are the things that keep me going. And I am a developer at heart. I have a long developer background. Uh, you can reach me in Twitter at Terhantila handle, and I also have a blog terhantila.com where I publish mostly Power Platform related content. So what's on agenda for today? <clears throat> Firstly, I will uh, talk a little bit about what DevOps is in general. And then we will take a look at what DevOps often is when you are talking about Power App development. You will see that it's quite a different thing. Uh, then I have two awesome demos prepared for you. In the first demo, I will show how you can actually enable multiple developers working on the same Power App simultaneously. That, of course, involves unpacking the Power App into source code files and having those source code files stored in a central source control system. Uh, in the second demo, I will then show you how we can automate the packaging of the Power App into a Power Platform solution and then get it deployed into a test environment. So really exciting stuff. So what is DevOps? Uh, according to Wikipedia, DevOps is a set of practices that combines software development and IT operations. It aims to shorten the system's life, uh, development life cycle and provide continuous del delivery with high software quality. Uh, at the top of the slide here, you can see the traditional DevOps process with all the phases in it, and it's an iterative process, so it repeats over and over again <clears throat> during the lifespan of the app. But what about Power Apps? Uh, unfortunately, quite often Power Apps DevOps process looks like this. So you had the code phase where you where where the developer actually creates the app in the Power App Studio. Then the release phase means that the developer publishes the latest version of the app, and then the operation phase starts. And you can see how we are missing really multiple uh, important steps compared to the traditional DevOps process. Uh, so I am going to show you next how we can overcome that issue by having a centralized source control system where these two imaginary developers, Paul and Mark, can actually store their source code and they can uh, get updates on the app if the other developer has made some changes to it. <clears throat> so uh, this is the demo scenario. Uh, Paul and Mark are both working on their own laptop, of course, but they're also having their own development environments where they will do the implementation of the Power App. But they are connected uh, to the same Azure DevOps repository where they will then store the source codes of the app. And that is the way they can actually synchronize 
the development so that uh, Paula, Paula can uh, get, get the version from the repository whenever she wants to. So let's take a look at the demo one scenario first. Paula comes to work and uh, she's going to continue working on the app. She was working previously a couple of days ago, <clears throat> but she knows that Mark has been doing some changes to the app in his own environment. Therefore, Paula needs to first uh, start the day by fetching the latest version of the app. So she will fetch the source code files of the Power App from, uh, from the DevOps repository. And then she packs those source code files into a MSAPP file, which she can then use to upload the app to her own development environment. After uh, she has imported the app into her environment, she can continue editing the app with the good old Power App Studio. Then when Paula thinks that the features uh, she was working on are done and ready, she saves the app, giving a descriptive comment about the things that she has changed or added to the app. After that, the app gets downloaded back to Paula's workstation and extracted into source code files. And then the changes are committed to the local Git repository and if so wanted, they are pushed to the DevOps repository, where they then can be consumed by other developers of the team. Uh, let's take a look at the tools that are used in this demo. Uh, firstly, on the Polas development environment, we have Power App Studio, of course, uh, that is used to edit, make modifications to the app, like we have always done with Power Apps. But then there is this developer's companion user interface that I have created. Uh, it is an app that Paula can use to tell, tell actually developer's companion monitoring flow that, hey, I'm going to start working on this specific app, app. please monitor for changes. <clears throat> And on Paula's laptop, there is a Power Automate desktop installed because that will be the one that actually downloads the app from Paula's Power Platform environment and initiates the extraction process. There is also, of course, the Git so that we can connect to the source control system. And there, then there is this thing called Power App Power App Source File Pack and Unpack Utility, which is a utility utility released in January, I think, and it's still in preview. But that is the program that we can use to unpack, actually unpack the MSAPP files into a bunch of source code files and then pack those files back to MSAPP file again. And then on the Azure DevOps side, we have Microsoft Power Platform build tools for Azure DevOps installed so that we can automate the deployment of the package to the test environment. OK, let's take a look at the demo. Please do remember that there are some preview features in use, so not everything here is a production ready yet but it will get there. Okay, so uh, let's first take a look at Mark's development environment. I have a VM running in Azure to simulate Mark's workstation. Let's open that up. So here I am in Mark's development 
environment. And Mark has this developer's companion app now open. It lists all the apps in the current environment um, that the Mark can start monitoring on. Uh, he only has this one app called Scotty Summit 2021 Demo App for DevOps. Uh, there are so also some settings in the developer's companion that can be maintained. Basically, they are telling our local uh, folder paths path for generating the source code files, etc. But let's now start monitoring the app. Mark wants to make some modifications to this app here. So let's start monitoring changes to it, then start editing it. Now, uh, the app is loading as uh, it normally would. Once the app is loaded, Mark can start making changes to it. This example app is uh, really simple, but Mark wants to add some uh, nicer visualizations to it. So let's switch to components and add something on the master page. Let's add an image here, put it here on the left bottom corner, for example, and choose the file for it. Now we have on each view in the app that is using this master component contains this flower image. So now uh, Mark is done with the modifications. As we can see, he's monitoring the changes. Now he needs to go and save. Let's give a comment, edit some flower power and save it. Now that comment that I ch actually just typed in will be used when this whole developer, developer's companion solution will actually make the commit to the local repository. So that comment will be used as the comment of that commit. So now we can see that things are happening. Uh, I'm not touching my laptop currently. The desktop flow is actually downloading the latest version of the app. Then it extracts the app into source code file files, and then it actually makes the git commit in the end. So now if I go to my VS code, uh, here is the actual um, source codes of the app. It's under the Power Apps folder. We have the Scottish Summit 2021 demo app for DevOps, and this is the extracted contents of the app. I'm not going to go dig into that now in the contents, but uh, I would strongly recommend everyone to test this out. There are some interesting stuff extracted here under the folder structure. But what you can now see that here in the uh, you can see at the bottom that there is one pending push to the repository. So now Mark pushes the changes to Azure DevOps source control system. And after that is done, we can go, go to Paula's development environment. So now uh, we are in Paula's environment and she has already this uh, demo app opened for editing. Uh, she is not monitoring the app changes yet. Uh, she can start doing it right now, or she could actually first get the latest version of Mark's changes. So she will open the VS Code as well. And as we can see here, there is a pending uh, change that Paula can pull to her environment. So let's do it. That's now done. And 
Now Paula has the latest source code of the app. Now what she needs to do, she has to pack those that source code structure into MSAPP file. Well, uh, the developer's companion flow that runs on the desktop actually generates also this small command line script that does the packaging. It calls the packaging tool and does the packaging for you. So I can just simply double click this file here and the package is created in the same folder. Now Paula can use this file to update her version of the app with the latest changes from Mark. So let's open that uh, demo app again and go to file open and browse. Now we can browse a local MSAPP file and here it is. Let's open it. And it's loading. And as we can see, the changes made by Mark are now available in Paula's environment. Now we still have to save this. So let's overwrite the old version of the app in Paula's environment, replace it. And that's that then. So now that Paula has the latest version of the app, she can actually go on and make some more changes to it. Of course, now she needs to start the developer's companion monitoring for that app. And let's do something. Let's insert the label here. Added by Paula. So that's that. Now Paula is ready. And let's rename. Let's be good and rename this label. Label Polar Text. And now let's say the change is and the same thing happens now on Polar's desktop that earlier happened in the Mark's dev environment. The, there is this uh, monitoring flow that kicks in and fetches the latest version of the app and starts a desktop flow that actually unpackages the app and commits changes to the git. So let's take a well, let's let this run first and then let's take a look at the flow that does the monitoring. So that's done. Paula has now the source code of her changes on her local desktop machine. But let's take a look at the flow. So here, here we can see that this flow is now running because I started the developer's companion monitoring here. So it's running, but if we take a look at the flow, what it actually does. So let's switch to edit mode and see what it has actually built off. So it's initiated by a power app call. Uh, it initializes some variables, for example, a timestamp to compare if the app has changes, uh, if the app has changed since the last time or not. And then it starts an infinite loop. So it will loop this uh, as long as the monitoring switch in the companion's UI app is switched on. And within this loop, we started by fetching the app. We get the app identifier as part of the startup parameters when this flow was called. So we will fetch metadata of that app. And then we will check if it was updated. So we will compare it with the timestamp variable we created earlier. There is this last modification timestamp in this app's metadata that we can use for the comparison. And if it has changes, if it's changed, 
then we will fetch all the versions of the app. Uh, so we will get latest versions uh, and their metadata with this get app versions preview um, action inflow and so we will do that and this will actually return the versions in descending order so the latest save of the app is the first element in the array that this action returns. Then we will fetch the URL of the actual MSAPP file. It's one of the metadata properties here uh, that returned by this action. And we will fetch the comment. It's also in the metadata of the version history. And then we update the uh, date timestamp that we use to see if the app has changes that we haven't processed yet. And then what happens is that we initiate a desktop flow. And I will show you that desktop flow now, next. So desktop flows run on the developer's workstation. So let's launch the Power Automate desktop app. So now I have the Power, Power Automate desktop app opened and the run package extractor desktop flow in edit mode. So uh, basically this desktop flow is using PowerShell to do all the things it needs to be doing. Uh, this flow is uh, constructed of three subflows and they are actually executed in this order. Uh, First, we start the PowerShell window and then we run the Extract Power App subflow. This subflow actually uh, fetches the package URL, uh, fetches the package file from the URL provided as a parameter to this flow. And once that file is downloaded, the downloading happens on the first line, and then it uses the uh, Power App Packager program to unpack the MSAPP file into source code files. And then uh, we create a packaging script so that it is really easy for the developer to package the app up again based on the source code fetched from uh, the repository. So we use the same packager again, pass opa exe, and then we just tell it to pack the source codes in the specified folder structure into MSAPP file. And then we store, store this script uh, as a command script file on the specified folder. And finally, we make a commit to the local repository with the comment uh, received as a startup parameter input, input variable for this desktop flow. So now if I take a look at the VS code, I can see that there are some changes pending for push. So let me take a look at the version history first. So here we can see that, okay, there is this uh, comment made by Mark that he added some flower power and then uh, I made a change 
with a comment add, added a test label. So now let's push the changes to the central repository like that and then let's open the Azure DevOps tenant here I have the Scottish Summit 2021 repository commits open. Let's refresh this page. And now we can see that Paula's latest comments are visible here. And if I click on that commit, I can actually see what's happened here. So what's interesting to us is we can take a look at the scrhome.pa.yaml. So that's the home screen source code for the app. So let's open that up and we can actually see the highlight of the parts that Paula has added. And as you can see here is the renamed label, label Paula text, and then its properties that were changed by the developer. So, this is really, really cool stuff that we can now do this as developers. We can see each other's changes. We can mer merge the changes if, if both uh, developers edit the same screen on the app, for example. It's really easy to automate the merge of those changes if those developers work on the different controls, of course, if they, if they do. If they do work on the controls named the same, then there will be merge conflicts and they have to resolve those conflicts by hand in the source code. But uh, it is, a, of course, it's a good naming conventions anyways to rename controls so that they are obvious and distinct. Okay, let's get back to the slides for a bit now. We're going to start talking about uh, Demo Scenario 2. So, so far we have discussed the Demo 1 part here in this picture. Now we're going to jump into the Demo 2, how we can actually automate the packaging and deployment of the app into another solution. So let's take a look at the demo two scenario. Uh, we have on the left here, we have the Azure DevOps uh, project. And on the right hand side, uh, there is this test environment, which is called Terra Andilas environment. And we want to automate things so that whenever uh, changes are pushed to test branch. Uh, there is this automated build pipeline that actually does the packaging and deployment of the solution into the target environment. So the steps that will be carried on are first we will install Power Platform tools uh, in that pipeline. Then we make some connection validations to the target environment. Uh, we fetch the source code of the Power App that we were working on in the previous demo. We fetch the source code of that and we package that uh, source code into MSAPP file. And then we put that file into Power Platform solution structure. So there is a solution folder structure in the repository where we will place the MSAPP file into correct place. And then we will pack the solution. So we will pack the MSAPP file first, move it to the right place, and then we will pack the wrapping solution because we can only automate deployment of solutions into Power Platform environment. So that's why we're doing a solution packaging. And then finally, we deploy the solution to the test environment. So let's take a look at that next. 
Okay, so let's open the VS Code again and let's make a push to test branch. So let's open the test branch first. And then merge changes from development branch into this test branch. So merge from development. And now we can synchronize the test branch. So now if we go and take a look at the Azure DevOps site again and go to pipelines, we have this Deploy Scottish Summit to test pipeline. It's actually waiting uh, for an available agent and it's now running. So it started running automatic automatically when I made a push to test branch. Uh, it will take a while, but let's take a look at the actual pipeline, how it, how it is created. So let's take a look at the YAML file of that. Uh, first of all, I have defined the trigger. So this pipeline is triggered whenever there is a push made to test branch. It uses the latest Windows uh, image. It has to be Windows machine because we are using the Power Platform build tools and they only work on Windows machines. So remember to use Windows build machine. Okay, so what happens next is that we start the pipeline by installing the Power Platform tools. Uh, then we pack the source files using the Pass OPA exe as we used in the demo one, we use it to pack the source files into MSAPP file. So this will be our target file right here. The naming of this Power App is done according to the solution package. So it's already positioned into the right place for the solution packaging. So this step packs the Power App and then we will pack the solution. Uh, after the solution has been packaged, we simply make a deployment to the target environment, which in this case is my own environment. So that's as simple as that. Now let's take a look at the pipeline if it has finished. Okay, it has. So we can see that now the solution has successfully been deployed into the test environment. So for the demo purposes, I could actually open my test environment and see the apps and open the Scottish Summit 2021 demo app for DevOps and see that this app actually has that label we added and the flower mark added in it. So it works. Great. Let's go back to the slides once more and uh, uh, there are some links to the tools I have been using to set up this demo. Uh, you can access those when I... Uh, uh, I think the slides are delivered in the Scottish Summit, so you will get those links there then. And that's it. Thank you very much for attending my session. If you have any comments, Feel free to con contact me in Twitter, for example. Bye.